In this video, I'm going to go over some basic assembly. You've made your parts, your puzzle piece parts, and you're ready to assemble them together. All right, so first you're going to open your Autodesk Inventor. All right, and you're going to find the puzzle pieces that I'm going to use in this video in the R drive. All right, you're going to find it under the IED and then Unit 4. Okay, now I've stuck them in the R drive, but you don't have rights to the R drive. So if you're going to save it, the assembly, then you're going to have to save those uh, puzzle pieces into your own H drive. And it's a really good idea to go ahead and do that because it'd be bad if you get halfway through this video and it was taking you longer than you expected. So let's go ahead and uh, save those pieces now into your H drive. So we're going to click on here, we're going to go to your R drive. Right. For my kids, it's Hogan. If you're in Chrome 6 class, go ahead and go to Chrome 6. Okay, ID Unit 4. All right. Notice I have Assembly. Under Assembly are all of the things for this video, as well as uh, My Assembly, if you need to look at it later and kind of decide like what constraints I used. Uh, but if you'll go ahead, it, it might be easiest just to right click on assembly, copy it, go into your H drive and save it under your puzzle cube. Okay, now I do have rights to save into uh, the R drive, so I'm going to go ahead and just use mine from the R drive. All right, so you've got your inventor open. You need to make a new, and we're going to do assembly. Notice here I have three choices. I have a mold design, which we may be getting to by the end of the year. So that's something you might learn. Uh, standard IAM, that's what you're mainly going to be using in here. And then there's weld mint, which we won't get to this year. All right, so let's go ahead and double click on this or click and create. Okay, so I'm going to go through how I would uh, assemble my puzzle piece. Okay, so also if you want to open up my assembly so you can see how it goes together, um, you can go ahead and pull that open now. Just pause the video. All right, so the way Inventor works is the most commonly used or the first thing you use is usually right here on the left. All right, so I want to do place component. Notice when I hover, it tells me what that is going to be able to do. So if you kind of forget, you can always hover at it and look. If yours doesn't say place here like mine does, you might click and then notice there's some other possibilities. And we just want the place. All right, so then you need to go find that folder. Okay, I'm pulling mine from the R drive. You're pulling yours from the H drive at this point. Uh, just in case, like I said, you don't realize how long this might take. And at the end of the hour, you're stuck uh, having to redo it the next day because you weren't able to save it. So uh, go ahead and pull the blue one first. Right, I'm going to consider the blue piece my center piece. And you want the piece that you feel is that center block to be the first piece you put in on anything you do. Okay, so I'm saying that that piece for me is my blue block. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click open. And it brings in the blue one. The first piece that's dropped in will go ahead and place itself in there. Now, if I want more than two pieces, I would go ahead and click, but I only need one piece. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say, okay, I'm done. I could have also hit the escape key and it would have uh, dropped that piece and made it try I wouldn't use it. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the next piece. You don't want to bring in all five pieces at once because it gets confusing. So you just want to bring in one at a time. All right, so the next one I'm going to do is my purple piece. When I put this together, to me, the logical way to put it together would be the purple piece next. So when you're doing your own, you need to decide which piece you consider that to be. Okay, so I'm going to click on the purple piece and I'm going to open it. I can drop this anywhere I want. All right, so I'm going to left click. Now notice if I had needed more than one of this item, I could drop more in, but I don't. So I'm just going to hit the escape key. 
All right. Now I'm going to look at this PowerPoint. Notice the basic assembly. Okay, so assembly constraints. It says assembly constraints are parameters that define geometric relationships between components in a CAD assembly. Constraints include mate and flush, angle, tangent, and insert. For this video, I'm only going to show you the mate and flush. Later on, you'll learn the other ones, but for the puzzle cube, those are the only two constraints you're going to use. All right, so you find constraints here. If I click on it, notice it looks like the window you just saw. All right, so looking back at this. We also need to talk about degrees of freedom. All right, a component floating in space has six degrees of freedom. Three of those are rotation, and then three of them are your X, Y, and Z axis. So degrees of freedom are systematically removed in assembly until only the desired components are allowed to move. And so this one would allow it to go up and down or rotate like you're twirling. This one would be this direction, back and forth, or like a somersault, rolling. Okay. And this one here, moving back and forth, or like a cartwheel or a somersault, rolling. Okay. And how you find that on Inventor, so that you can see if you've gotten rid of all of your degrees of freedom, is you'll look at View, because you want to view your degrees of freedom, and you're going to click Degrees of Freedom. Notice I have six degrees of freedom on this one, but I have nothing on the blue one. The reason why there are no degrees of freedom on the blue one, right, and if I try to pull it, it doesn't move, Notice if I pull this one, it still moves. Is because this one has been grounded. The very first piece that gets dropped into an assembly is called grounded. If I go over here, look how it has like a little push pin. It means that this one is grounded. If later something happens and I delete this piece off, I won't have any grounded pieces. And it really messes things up when you're putting it into drawing sheets. So you always want to make sure you have one grounded piece. If you end up deleting it, you need to put something else as a grounded piece. Say this purple one, you would right click on it. You would go down to grounded and you'd click grounded. Right? Obviously, I don't want two pieces grounded because then they wouldn't be assembled together. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that off. All right, so now I'm going to go back to assembly. Now that I've got the degrees of freedom turned on, it'll help me a lot in making sure that I have everything assembled correctly. All right, so now let's look at the two that we're going to be talking about, mate and flush. So the mate constraint, all right, says constraints, two faces, edges, points, or axes together. It could even be an edge and a point or an edge and a face doesn't have to be two of the same things. All right? For us, you're really looking at just faces with what we're uh, assembling together in this one. All right, so here the red arrows is indicating that you have clicked on two faces that you want to make together. And what that means are these two pieces are going to come together on the same plane. Right? Just because you put them on the same plane doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to come face to face like this. Uh, one of them might end up over here, but it's still on the same plane. And I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay? The other one is flush. Okay? It just means that these two pieces, notice when you click on those, are going to end up facing the same direction on the same plane. So if you had like a large plane here, they would be moving around on the same plane, facing the same direction. Where mate, that plane, they're facing each other on that plane. Okay, so let's see what I mean by this. All right, so I can rotate, make it smaller, bigger, whenever I'm uh, assembling, move it around, just like whenever I was making my pieces. So I am ready to put these two pieces together. And the way it goes together is that this piece right here lines up with that spot here. So I'm going to click Constrain. Notice here it's Mate and 
flush, whenever you hover over buttons, it tells you what each one of it, them is. So here I've got mate or flush. I need to mate this one. So I've got mate clicked. I'm going to say this at this face to that face. Okay, and I'm going to click apply because yes, that is correct. Now I'm going to close this for just a second to show you something. So here I still have movement frontwards and backwards, and I still have up and down. Okay, so up and down. I can still move this up and down, forward and back. And also, notice I still have a rotation. And I can't really drag it to show you that, but it could still rotate. <clears throat> because it's just mated on this same plane. Okay. Now I do want these to go together like this. So I'm going to click Constrain. And now I'm going to flush this face with this place face because they're supposed to be on the same plane. Click apply. I'm going to put this upside down. These two should line up flush. Notice I still have one degree of freedom so it can still go up and down and I need to take that away. So I'm going to click flush and I'm going to click the two faces that are supposed to be flush together. Now notice I do not have any more degrees of freedom. Okay. So if I wanted to look at those constraints that I just put on, maybe something doesn't look right, um, you need to figure out what you did wrong on your assembly, you can go over here to the browser, click on the little plus next to them. Right? And these are the constraints you've put on it. So I'm going to hover over mate. Right, it shows the faces I've made it together. The flush. And then the other flush. And these are the same ones on both. Right, if the one of them isn't correct, I can right click and I can delete it off. Okay. Now I'm ready to put in my next piece. I'm going to go in and I'm going to get my orange piece this time. Right, so I click place and I want my orange piece. Since I'm already using this folder, each time it's going to bring open the same folder again. If I'm uh, working from a different folder, you know, as soon as I find it the first time and I start working with it, it'll start putting it in there. And so I'm going to click OK. And again, if I need more than one, I would drop more than one, but I just need one. So I'm going to left click and then I'm going to hit escape or I'm going to click right click and, and tell it OK. All right, notice I've got all six degrees of freedom again. Got to take them all away. This particular piece goes this end right here needs to come out this hole. So I'm going to click Constrain and I'm going to flush this face with either the purple or the blue. It really doesn't matter because they're both flush. I click on it. Now notice, I'm going to go ahead and apply. It doesn't look like it's flush, but it's just the angle it's at. If I click on this front, you'll notice it is flush. It still goes up and down. Okay, we look at this, it's still got up and down. It can still move this direction. But it is flush with the side that I asked for. It can also rotate. So now I want it to actually go inside of here. I, I also, if you kind of, if you like to rotate things so that it looks like uh, the way it's actually going to go in, at this point I can click on it and I can click the letter G. Okay, so I'm going to press the letter G and notice that I've got rotation possibilities on it now. So I can rotate it. So I can look at the way I actually want it to go in. This piece, and I'm going to hit escape to get rid of my rotation, rotation, but this piece actually goes in like this and obviously a little bit up, you know, rotated a little different, but I can go ahead and start working with it. 
Right? You don't have to do that, but sometimes if I can't quite visualize it, I'll turn the piece so that I can kind of see what I'm looking at. So I click Constrain, click Flush, and this one here, and if I need to get closer, I can close up, all right? That surface and this surface need to be flush. I'll click Apply. All right, now at this point, I can go ahead and flush the two bottoms, and that'll take care of it. Or I could even mate the inside of here with the inside of this one. Okay, to me, sometimes it's easier to flush. Uh, as you could see, I could have done both. And notice whenever I'm trying to get an edge, I get in real close. I, I, I'm going to use my zoom a lot. So I'm going to click flush because I think it's a little easier. I'm going to click either the blue or purple would work. It doesn't matter. Okay, I'll just pick the purple because I really like purple. And the orange. So notice that now they are flush. And I have taken away all of the degrees of freedom. So I'm going to click apply. Right, so now I am ready for another piece. And this time I'm going to pick my black piece. Click place. Pick the black piece. And I click open. I'm just going to drop it in here. Again, it doesn't really just matter where because I'll be assembling it where I want it. And I could either right click, OK, or escape. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click on it and click on my letter G again and kind of rotate it so you can see how it looks. Again, you don't have to do this if you can already see it. I just kind of want to show you where it actually goes in. It goes in this back spot here. So I'm going to go ahead and flush this face to this face. I'm apply that. I still have a rotation you can see and I can also move it back and forth and up and down so I need to take those away. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do a mate here and I'm going to mate this face here. I'm going to rotate it around made it with that face right there. Click Apply. Now I'm going to get rid of this last one by saying Flush. And again, it doesn't matter what I flush it to. I, I like purple, so I'll stick it on the purple one. Okay. Notice each time I do this, I'm adding constraints to that purple one. Click Apply, and there's that flush. I've taken all of my degrees of freedom now from the black piece, and I have one left. I click Place. I have the green piece left. Click Open and drop it in. Escape. Now again, six degrees of freedom. I'm going to first do a flush because this piece is actually oriented the way it needs to be. But I'm going to click on this face. Might as well put this one on the orange. I'm going to apply that. Okay, when I look at this, notice by doing that, I only have three degrees of freedom. So by doing a mate or a flush, each time you are taking away three degrees of freedom that first time. And that's just on the first time. So the second time, I'm going to go ahead and do a mate. I mate this spot to this one, these faces. All right. The second time, I'm taking away two degrees of freedom. And this last time, I'm taking away the one. I flush these two top ones. And again, it doesn't matter which one I pick. It's just going to uh, 
put those together. It doesn't, it's all in the same plane, so it doesn't matter which one I pick. I'm going to apply. So now I can look at this and say, did I get it all constrained correctly? I'm just going to kind of rotate it, if you'll rotate yours whenever you're doing it. Make sure you've got it all together. Then I can also drag and see if any of them move. And if nothing moves, then I know that uh, I constrained it all correctly. Now you're ready to save your assembly. You have to save an assembly in the same place that your parts are. It may let you go ahead and save it, but it's not going to let you reopen it if it's not in those same in that same file that those parts are. So it's very important that you have a file folder with these puzzle cube pieces and assembly in the same one. So I'm going to click up at the top left and I'm going to say save as and I'm going to find that folder in your H drive because you've moved my pieces to the H drive. I'm going to go ahead and save this in my R drive just so that you have the same assembly that uh, you had been that you practiced on so that way you can go back and look at these mates and fleshes uh, to remember how to do it if you need to okay so I'm just going to save it over it say yes and I already had it so I'm going to save it over the existing one say yes when this comes up just leave it as no you don't need to change any of these pieces because you didn't make any modifications to them so you're going to go ahead and click OK Okay, my assembly has been saved. Notice too, I forgot to tell you this, but I did not leave my save as assembly one. More than likely yours says assembly one. So when you save this, you want to change the name because later at the end of the year, you're gonna have a whole bunch of assembly one files and you're not gonna be able to find them as easily. So you wanna name it like puzzle cube assembly or something like that and save it into that file. Okay, so the next video I'm going to show you how to do a presentation of this uh, assembly in, in the presentation, the IPN.